<laughs> well, now we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Torch TV Talks Film. I'm here with Aiden. Hiya. Yeah. I'm here with Raul. Hello. And we're just going to kind of have a little talk about all things film related, whether that be what we're enjoying, what we're looking forward to, because we're getting to the summer period where there's lots of big releases. You know, we're just going to talk about everything and anything that we can think of. So um, I'm aware that Aiden has come with some pre-prepared questions. So the first question for the room, what is your favorite film? Aiden, would you like to start us off? All right. Well, I'll say, um, are we doing big faces for the questions? Or? Uh, yeah, big faces for questions. I'll say, we're, we're just trying this out, guys. So sorry if it looks a bit messy. Um, I would say, uh, I'll never be good with this because I, I love so many films, really. Um, my recent, a recent film that I really do, uh, I really did like um, is Odyssey, all time classic. Uh, Reservoir Dogs. I just absolutely love how. Yes. Like I don't know. I don't know how to spy it. It just to me is a masterpiece. Just how Quentin Tarantino. I'm trying to remember names now. How he just beautifully goes with this sort of underbelly, this criminal world. I mean, Pulp Fiction does it perhaps a little bit better, but mm -hmm. Reservoir Dogs still has that odyssey because it's more of a indie feel. It's not a big Hollywood blockbuster. And you really get that sense of feel. And I, I personally, I, I think he still keeps that sort of that feeling in most of his films. It's still mm -hmm. like that sort of sense of that break of the law, but also slightly not the conventional Hollywood film. So, yeah, I, I definitely love that sort of film. Yeah, I, I like Reservoir Life. In Reservoir Dogs, I love the fact that he kept um, uh, the feeling because ev everything is mostly filmed inside of a building. But he kept, like, every minute of that film, he kept my attention whilst being in just one room. And that's really hard to do with my sp attention span. It's, it is amazing to think about, wow, he kept the, his dialogue and everything about his actions um, or the uh, character's actions was so interesting that I didn't care. It was just one room. It felt good. That's no, I, I agree with it not being the... Linear narrative as well is really clever. Like, yeah. All right, Ra all right, Raul. Um, you come up with some really good points there. So, what would you say is your favourite film? So, I think it's it's. Uh, I have the same struggle as Asian. It's so hard to choose choose one film because I feel like every uh, like every time I watch a new film and I really like it, that's that becomes my new favourite. And I hate that about myself because I can't choose a favourite when. Uh, necessarily, but I think um, uh, there's so many like good films that I enjoy that I I, I think no 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 I can't choose one because I uh, uh, um, I I know I like one that specifically for everything that it, it did that is um, uh, no country for old men I think that was Ooh. for me that was the perfect film like the perfect casting was absolutely amazing um the perfect cinematography i loved everything about it um it was just exactly how i want cinematography to do so i felt like um uh, yeah it's roger deakins or deakins that did that cinematography i feel like in that film everything that he did as a cinematographer i would have done as a cinematographer so i feel like i connect to that film especially in filming because that's exactly how i would have done it um and i love that about the film i, I love the narrative i love the, the the story and everything it's just it's just for me it's a masterpiece of a film no now, i agree sorry oh, i'm sorry I, said, I agree yeah um now it's time for my favorite film and i think this will actually be a massive surprise to both of you my favorite film is actually a documentary called Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Um, <coughs> many people, to many people, it sounds familiar, but they've never actually seen it. And basically, it tells the story of this sushi chef and his quest to become the best su sushi. sushi. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, his, and his attempts to become the best 
sushi chef in the world. And it's really interesting because it, it breaks down all aspects of his life, like how is how his desire to be the best is in affecting his family, how it's affected his social life. And I just think it's a really interesting study in kind of determination and like will. But it's, as well, it's shot beautifully, it's edited together. Mm -hmm. The editing for it is a masterclass in continuity. It's just mm -hmm. a super enjoyable watch. At the minute, it is free on Amazon Prime. So if anyone has Amazon Prime, I would seriously recommend sitting down watching Jerry Dreams of Sushi. It'll take you like an hour and a half, but you'll just feel good after it. Awesome. That sounds good. I, I definitely heard about it, but I've never got the chance to see it. Honestly, I would recommend just sitting down and committing for an hour and a half. It's just... It's it's awesome. It's kind. It's the only way I can really describe it is it's really is just a work of art. Like everything about it is just amazing. Like the, to the cinematography, to the sound design, it's just great. That sounds good. Sounds good. I've never had like proper sushi. That's an interesting thing. Never got. I don't like every sushi that I got is just the Tesco one. That's about it. Mm. So I, I'm quite interested in how, how to actually make good sushi. Honestly, I'm like honestly, after watching it, the one thing you'll do is you'll want to go away, make some sushi, and just enjoy it. It's just it's just so good. He's got the best sushi restaurant in the world. It's got five Michelin stars. Wow. It's based in a train station and it only sits ten people. James. Wow. She wow. It's probably crazy. Less, probably it's less crazy. in the uh, the COVID environment as well. Okay, right. So getting a little bit off track there. So now moving on to our next question, which is, what is your favourite sick day film? By sick day film, we mean you know you're feeling crap, you're laid up in bed, you just you want something to just take your mind off how bad you feel. So you're just gonna sit there and enjoy it. Would anyone like to jump in first, or do you want me to go? Oh, okay. I could jump. All right, good, good. <laughs> um, so for me, my favorite six day film is called Here Comes the Boom. It's a kind of comedy starring Kevin James, who becomes an MMA fighter in the UFC with the help of Baz Rutan, um, to basically make $40,000 because he, he wants to save the school's music program. What's really interesting about this film is so many kind of filmmakers have asked to use the UFC brand in their film. The UFC have only ever licensed their brand once, and that's for Here Comes the Boom, starring Kevin James. And I just think, and I just think there's something comical in that. There's truly some amazing scenes. Um, there's a, a, a scene that will always, it always just cracks me up and gets me to the point where I'm kind of red in the face from laughing. So, yeah. Bruton, who is actually was an MMA world champion, he's teaching a disco self-defense dance class. And he's got like this disco music on and he's just screaming like throw him on the ground, stab in the face, stab on the face, a victory dance. And there's just something about how like carefree and joyful about it that just always makes me laugh. Nice. Honestly, another just good watch if you just want something dumb to laugh at. Or if you want to see Kevin James kick some ass, like majorly. <laughs> No, sounds good. Hey, someone knows it. <laughs> oh, um, sounds okay. good. Well, okay. do you want to go first, or do you want me to? Yeah, take yeah, off? but I feel no, no I, I could go first. But I feel like this is a really hot take. So, um, oh, okay. I promise well, you, I promise you, I'm, I'm, I'm not lame and I'm not wet. But I think my feels good movie is is got to be Cars One. So oh. just wait, 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 wait for it. I, I, I promise you, I'm not wet. It's just I think that is connected to my childhood, and I, whenever I feel like down or I feel like it's, it's like sick or anything, it's just I really want a feel good movie that I know I know, and I know I can you know always uh, rely on to make me feel better. And that that for me is Cars One because um, it's always been. But whenever I was little, I always had a a collection of toy cars, and I always liked Cars One. Um, 
and I always felt like that is for me that is the perfect movie. It has a uh, pretty good action when it comes to you know uh, Lightning McQueen being you know so so uh, popular and then going into a town and nobody knows him and kind of making the life there. Um, it's just so interesting. Um, uh, every time I watch it, it feels like I uh, I get to you know experience it again. And I, I, what I love about the Cars universe, even though it's so stupid, like Cars being humans and stuff, uh, like every time I, I watch it again, I notice some um, some new like um, um, what, what do you call it? Some some new details that I've never seen. Like the the the, the skies and the clouds are actually cars, and the mountains are actually old like Pontiac cars, and uh, like the. The planes are actually just the plane, like um, what do you call them? The, the 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 smoke that is left behind planes is actually like uh, car, uh, like uh, how do you call it? Car marks. I mean, it's just stupid details that is making the universe be just cars. It's so it's so it's just really funny to me but the thing is i religiously watch cars one but never any other cars movie after that because i i strongly disagree with sequels i don't like any kind of sequels i i don't like cars one no i don't like cars two and three they're just horrible movies but cars one perfect movie yeah honestly i, I don't like sequels in general honestly, i don't agree with i don't click with sequels Honestly, I've heard some amazing, like, just on the topic of of the cars film alone, like, so many interesting conversations that have been had about, like, the inner message of cars. Like, it's just incredible. It is just incredible. It's just a feels-good movie. It's just I can't stop That's watching right. it when I feel down. Like, whenever I, I talk with my friends and I say, I say, oh, what's your, you know, what do you like watching when you feel that I said cars? They said, what? Pardon? I don't know. I, sorry, guys. They kind of they kind of just sit there and they go, really? Cars? And it's like, <laughs> yes, it's, it's just a nice film. It is just a nice film. It's just a chill film. And uh, I've been watching it with my housemates like two or, two or three times this year. And they always get bored of it, but I always just watch their smiling and just continue watching. Oh, it's just, oh, it's just too good. I like it. Uh, it's just a good time. It is just a good time. Aiden, right? So, give us your sick day film. I don't want. I don't want people to think less of me for so. It's more. Like, <laughs> it's more of a film series than anything. But I, I, I promise to not think any less of you than I already do. <laughs> but it's essentially um, any of the Transformers movies. Maybe not the, <laughs> maybe not the newest one, but like, like any Michael Bay movie, really. But like, it's like they're simple. You don't have to think. Like when I'm ill. I tend to want something that I can kind of switch my brain off, but can still keep me <laughs> entertained if I am watching. And that's essentially what they do, just explosions. And you can't go wrong with car, <laughs> fucking cars. I mean, yes. Honestly, it's nice. it's, but like, yeah, I, I tend to like that sort of thing just because it's just simple and it's like full of fun and laughter. But then yeah, again, my sick day program is like something like Rick and Morty, which is mm. sort of, He's the complete opposite of that, which so I don't know. I'm kind of strange in that sort of sense. No, I feel um, like good, good. All I'm saying is, is after you've gone on Transformers binge and you've watched all of them, do you suddenly feel the need to drive a Chevrolet, drink Red Bull, only drink Bud Light, and wear Wrangler jeans? <laughs> as far as I'm aware, Transformers is just an excuse for product placement. Exactly. <laughs> It's like, it is no. I mean, I'm not going to go as far to say they're great movies or anything. They're not even, <laughs> movies, but they're fun movies. Like, you you can't tell me you're not having fun when you watch a car shoot another car or some guy <laughs> say like a line as cheesy as "My face is the warrant." I mean, that's, that's a good point. Pure <laughs> art. So right, I think. The thing I I go on good. 
Oh, no, no, Raul, you go ahead, mate. I've cut you off for all right. <laughs> I'm just too talkative. I'm sorry. The thing I, I like about them is, is this is not like an insult, but every time I watch a, a Transformers movie, I feel tired because there's so many cuts and the edit is so, like, so much. Like, I feel yeah. tired, like, changing from scene to scene. Like, every... Uh, is it, isn't it Transformers has a record of, like cuts in between scenes yeah i just feel every time i i, I see it i just feel a bit like knackered for just I'm, trying to follow the story i'm pretty sure transformer the transformers film franchise is the reason i now have to wear glasses because my <laughs> eyes get worn out with the non-stop explosions and jump cuts because i i don't exactly what you know you'll sit there and in, and in like one scene where it's two people talking There'll be 30 jump cuts in the middle yeah. of there. For some reason. For some reason. They'll they're just there and nobody knows why. Oh, that's great. Maybe maybe because I'm just always ill watching these movies. I don't notice that. I don't know. Honestly, completely attention. Honestly, Aiden, I'm sorry for you because we've ruined your sick day franchise. Now the next <laughs> time you'll see it, it's like the glass will be shattered. You'll just oh, see. I hate that. Oh, I hate that. I'm gonna have to find a new film. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, right, Rick and Morty is, the, is really good. Uh, that's a good second choice. Okay. So, next question, everyone. What is the film you can never get bored of? I, I Jimmy. Again, Oof. it's the same thing with the first question. I have too many. Also, everyone, uh, just. Just ignore the small spelling and grammar error at the start of the question, please. Oh uh, yeah, I really I, I I typed this all in like five seconds. I haven't even proofread it. That, that was um, <laughs> I, I think the what I think the film I can never get bored of. <laughs> oh uh, god, well, that's actually a hard one. I'm thinking about like all of yeah. like the films I can never get bored. Of. I think yeah. it'd probably be um like the jackass series of films like Ooh. everything they've done because i don't know what it is but they they never get unfunny or like boring to see like that there's always something comical about them but like i think it's just a really good example of like a film that's got rewatch value because you'll forget certain scenes of like some really really kind of messed up gross stuff that happens like you'll forget about it and then you'll rewatch it like two months later and you'll go, Oh, I've completely forgot about when they vomited on this person or like, you know. <laughs> and it's just, I, I think as well, it's just a really good example because of like prank series of films because they're not really malicious. It's not like going out and causing a nuisance in the general public. Like you see all these YouTube pranksters do. It's just nice. It's just mindless humor. Yeah, that's good. I mean, that's a good answer. I, I mean, I have hard to for beat me, that like, I have a lot of films uh, that I watched like when I was a kid and that. For example, uh, on the top of my mind, Transformers. Nah. Uh, but also like things like King Kong or Jurassic Park, the mm. Peter Jackson King Kong, by the way. Um, uh, what things like Star Wars as well, like that, that sort of films that obviously, in my opinion, they never age. Um, yeah, they are pretty good, and I, 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 that's I like that sort of thing. I don't really have one particular film that I always go because, like I said, I, I got so many. So I'm trying to think of a recent one that I watched. Then um, I don't, I don't know. Raul, do you got any? <laughs> I think, I think uh, for me. Um, a film that I never get bored of is those kind of films you watch, um, like for a specific um, occasion. Um, but I think that for me is is gonna be uh, it's another animation. But I, I I promise you I'm not lame. So, but I think the film I never get bored of is uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, the the uh, Tim yeah, Burton film. because. Because it, yeah, it's it's one that I watch in between Halloween and Christmas, but I also like same time in the year. I just feel like oh, I feel like watching that film again. Is is that kind of film I I could never 
stop watching because it is so it, first of all because it, it's a stop motion animation is so interesting to just see them and just think about wow what what the people have gone through to make that it's just amazing to me and i love that and i love to see every kind of detail like whenever there's a scene i like to just pay attention to every kind of I, i'm boring I, I i promise you i'm boring but i like to watch every kind of like scene and and kind of try to notice every kind of frame um and how they moved the 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 how do you call the clay uh, and how it moved and how it differ differentiates from the other kind of scenes uh, and that's interesting to me <laughs> and i mean it's I, I agree the detail that goes into something like a uh, stop motion is for is, is amazing yeah, it's it is. Amazing. Honestly, yeah, no, I do agree. Like anything like that, uh, oh, Avatar. Then <laughs> if I'm going, if I'm going to jump onto the animation bandwagon, I mean, I'm going I, then. I mean, I I can't to this day. It still kind of blows me my mind because I know like you got things like Endgame and that, which is now basically mm. achieved the same fear. But to have a film mm. that's just so predominantly animation. And creative and new, and every little detail is different, but it still has that area of uh, familiarity. Because we all yeah. been to woods, I assume, and know what nature looks like, and it feels like a real world, despite if it's not. It's it's awesome. I I I think yeah, I think it was like ahead of its time in that sort of that sort of yeah, animation, live action sort of blend. Mm -hmm. But the story is just heartwarming. I love it. Yeah, I love, I love the characters. I love the music in it. The music is a big thing for me. Um, I, I really like just the music in it. I don't like musicals in general, but I like the music yeah. in in animation because it feels like more. I don't know. This may be a hot take, but it feels more sincere when it comes from animated characters. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I agree. Just, with I'm you. weird. I agree with you to a bit there because I'm not a big fan. I think musicals is probably my least favorite genre overall, but I do like a lot of animated movies, like Disney movies, that particularly are, are technically mm. musicals. Mm. All right. Are we going to our last final question? Right, I think it's time for the last question. And, you know, <laughs> it's one question that every film student fears being asked. It's the question that keeps most film students up at night. <laughs> What's your favourite director? You know, just a quick moment of thought. I, I've got my answer locked in, ready to go. Does anybody else? Then. Right, then. so my favourite director of all time is Wes Anderson. I just oh, think yes. the way he presents his visuals, his cinematography, and just his use of colour within a scene is unmatched by any director alive at the moment. That's it. Exactly. I just, like in this and as well that i think because he's inspired a whole movement online of things that are things that are accidentally wes anderson where they've got this really <laughs> open color palette but things that are accidentally perfectly symmetrical as well and i just the way i think back at it and i came to this conclusion was that i sat there and i, went, and I sat there and i went I can't remember how any other film director really directs his films visually or kind of in the sense of like what's on the screen apart from Wes. When I think of them all, the Wes Anderson style sticks out to me the most, but as well, mm -hmm. the actual structure of his films and his scripts, I think are just simply sublime and amazing. Like Grand Budapest Hotel is just a masterclass of cinematography, um, pacing of a film, Great. comedy. And just getting the most out of the littlest things, like I just think yeah. it's, I just think him and all of his films are just sublime. It definitely, I feel like he's he's definitely got to be a titan of color. He's mm. like from any kind of direct, like any kind of film, he's definitely the top in using color and making color the main thing. It's just Wes Anderson. Where, when I was when I was watching. Um, when I was watching uh, uh, Grand Budapest Hotel, I was literally blown away, and my 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 mouth was next to my uh, toes. I couldn't believe what he did with color and how he like uses color to emphasize feelings. That's why, I, oh, 
It's just beautiful. And especially, like, he can do that with any kind. Because he did, what, what was that film? Um, Fantastic Mr. Fox. He yes. did that with, like, clay animation. Like, how yeah. he used the orange and the, and, and everything. He made that perfectly. Perfectly. He's such a, oh, he's such a good director. I can't, oh. oh I, I agree, 100%. I, it, again, he creates a whole world really like it's it's in it's its own you recognize it and it's very human and very real but like it's in its own little sort of parallel universe really if you like it's just, exactly uh, he's one a bit like tim burton he's one of those directors that really he supports completely the idea of auto theory like every film he makes he's is his own and just yeah, work. Exactly. It's very interesting how he, he always seems to work with someone in writing these films. He always seems to have another mm -hmm. co writer in that sort of thing. But yeah, definitely, I agree. It's amazing. Um, definitely amazing. I've got a few. I'm never good with these questions. I've got, I've got a few. <laughs> but if I. If, I don't know if I should either pay respect to my childhood one or or, or go for the more recent one. I, I think I'll be nice. And also, I'm referring more back to his films, his early works in the seventies, the eighties, and the nineties. Not so much his recent stuff. I won't lie. I think he's gone gone down the hill in his directing choices. But Ridley Scott, in my opinion, Ooh. growing up watching some of his movies, really was good. Things like Blade Runner and Alien. In my opinion, some of the greatest sci-fi movies, Alien being one of the best horror movies ever. I, I I love that sort of Ridley Scott sort of storyline. He's all narrative and that sort of thing, that sort of question things, but again, going for the out of the world sort of aspect. Mm. I won't lie, like I watched one of his uh, like a it was a TV series actually that he was behind on a lot of the creators' decisions called. Uh, Raised by Rules. It's not bad, but you can tell he's kind of like, it's like inspired a lot of ideas to that was similar to like alien sort of worlds sort or of thing. In fact, you could probably even say it's in the same universe with like, they have like androids that obviously bleed by blood and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's, there's some really good parts of it, but I feel like as a director, or he does more producing now anyway, but as a, as a film creator, he kind of, lost his taste a little bit i think which is it's, it's sad truth for a lot of them really they get to a point where they start dipping before they uh go unfortunately mm. i think i think what i like most about ridley scott is the way he uses um climax and um the way he kind of builds up the story to a point and then like kind of something just deflates and then rises again and then deflates and rises again. i love that uh, he's yeah. uh, like his his range of narrative is really dynamic and i love that i forgot to yeah i forgot to say that he's in my opinion he's a master of suspense yeah exactly that's, he, that's the really way knows I'm looking how, for it. he really knows a slow bit if you don't like slow movies then he's not a director for you but he's really good at slowly building the story while still grabbing your attention if you just Exactly. Yeah, so what's your exactly. what's your final what's your ultimate so, answer? Ah like my my heart is like fighting for two names, but I think one like I'll pick like always makes me you know smile. So my, my choice would be and this is really cliche, but it's is um Quentin Tarantino and then the other one that actually I think won my heart is Edgar Wright, and wait, wait oh, for it, yeah. Edgar, I love, I love, um, he, like, Edgar Wright in every shape and form, um, is such a good director in everything that he does, I love, I love Quentin Tarantino for what he did, because his work is just amazing, and a masterclass in, in narrative, uh, and a masterclass in just being a, a just a complete badass, um, I love that about uh, Quentin Tarantino and I love his kind of films, but I think what Edgar Wright is doing 
in is what I would do and what I've done like uh, like what I've done in my like scripts and stuff even before actually liking him so I, I was doing what he does and I can find my 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 uh like my personality in his editing and in his way of directing like I was watching baby driver the other day and I I I kind of was absolutely blown away how he uses music with his like accents in films and how he yeah. uses uh, his narrative and music to emphasize the the like the personality and the feeling of the character there's the same with like the cornetta trilogy is just absolutely oh, right. amazing like everything like the narrative was great the, the casting was absolutely perfect perfect uh, spotless the 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 memeability the memes that came out from every every one of his films is just amazing and i love that and i just find myself more in what edgar wright does than quentin tarantino but both of them titans of directing i yeah. feel like edgar wright just wins my heart definitely no i agree i, I do like the conetto series i think they're very yeah. they, they should get more praise than yeah. they, they get iconic yeah, Honestly, yeah. I think I think as well, like the Cornetto trilogy, I think is just a really nice intro to a lot of like what filmmaking actually is. Because yeah. they're films that are completely opposite in a lot of regards to each other. They are completely different. But I think when you actually learn that they're a trilogy and they're all linked together, I think that really just opens people's mind to what a film can be. And I think that's one mm -hmm. thing Edgar really does well. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. what, what I like about Edgar Wright is that you is so like blatantly obvious to recognize his way of directing because it's it's obvious to see like the 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 jump cuts and the cuts from the lamp post or anything it's just like fun really interesting cuts that he always uses and like I could see uh, in uh, is really nice in in Scott Pilgrim his way of editing is so fun and like a cartoonish that you, you you can't but notice oh yeah that is that's is definitely edgar right yeah it's just definitely. obvious it's him and i like that and he uses that for his advantage My. very very interesting so uh ladies and gentlemen we are officially out of questions for this nice little kind of live podcast, I guess, what we've done here. Um, yeah, 30 so minutes. Right. <laughs> yeah. 30 minutes, that's hey. perfect timing. Perfect timing, exactly what we wanted. So we're going to wrap up now. I've been Joe with Aiden and Raul. I hope you've enjoyed our talk about all things film, filmmaking, film related. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>